Are you curious about the history and stories of West Coast hip hop? Well, here it is. Graffiti is not a bad word, although there are some who would try to convince us otherwise. City officials, public transportation workers, law enforcement agencies, they all have campaigns against it. And their position would make sense. Each year, they spend millions of dollars in graffiti removal. Also, they're still concerned about the negative impact of aerosol cans on the environment. Despite all of this, when style writing, aka graffiti art, was developed in the 1970s, it gave a voice to those who wanted to be heard. It was a form of youth rebellion. Sometimes that may be worth a little damage. Legendary style writer Eric Create Walker was one of those voices. Born and raised in South Central Los Angeles during the early 1980s, he was introduced to style writing in elementary school. As early as third grade, he decided to focus on the genuine talent he had for art and discover he could earn money. He drew his classmates' names in graffiti-style lettering on a sheet of paper, collecting a quarter for each drawing. He continued working on his style writing and sketches, and when he grew a little older, he continued to look for ways to earn money from his art. Let's push forward to 1987. Okay. I was in the, at this point now, I'm in the seventh grade, eighth grade, probably I'd say seventh to eighth. Um, my mentor named Rish, he did some local murals in the in the neighborhood in the neighbor or in the hood. He he did an auto what you call it the auto parts store where they sell auto parts, and they paid him. If I'm not mistaken, I want to say a hundred or two hundred bucks, maybe roughly. Mm-hmm. And at that time, that sounded like a lot of money for us in the '80s, especially in the hood, for somebody to do some graffiti art. They're like, oh man, they paid you how much to do that? I was like, oh man, and he, and he was like, yeah, man, you could do it too. And I'm thinking, I'm not as good as you, but damn, maybe I can. <laughs> mm-hmm. So next thing you know, I ended up, I said, well, let me try to do that. I didn't, tell, I didn't tell him that. That's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. So what I did was I took a school, an empty school folder and the, the three-ring binder, and I put the pl- plastic sleeves in it, and I put pictures of my artwork in there. Mm-hmm. And I created some business cards out of regular eight and a half by eleven paper and went to thrifties at that time. What no see what you call it right at it was thrifties. And I went and I went there and cut them out. And I drew them by, by hand and cut them out and went from door and made little flyers. <laughs> and I went from door to door in my area, knocking on people businesses, asking can I paint over the gang graffiti and do some artwork on their walls. Mm, And a lot of people were telling me, no, 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 no. That's all I heard was a bunch of no's. And I was shy back then. So I started feeling like, damn, man, nobody's going to say yeah. And it wasn't until this one guy that run the burger stand, he he ended up saying, oh, yeah, let me see some of your work. So he looked through my book. Some of the other people, they didn't even look at none of my work. They just said no. This Mm. is one guy said, let me see your work. And I let him see it. He said, you did all this? Some stuff I ain't gonna lie, I did. Some stuff I didn't do, but I had to. I had to play the role. They say fake it until you make it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I did all this. <laughs> they said, yeah, this is good. What can you do on the side of our wall? I said, I could put the word burgers and draw a chef with a hat, a cartoon character. They said, okay. How much you charging? I, I got nervous because I never charged nobody really for nothing big. At mm-hmm. that time, I was like, uh, I was scared to even say a hundred. I was like, a uh, hundred. <laughs> He said, 100? I was like, ooh, did I say the wrong thing? He was like, okay. <laughs> he said, uh, come back tomorrow and I'll give you a final answer if I'm going to let you do it. I said, okay. Mm-hmm. And, and the next key was to follow up. So I was determined. I went back after after I left school that day. I was on my way home. I went back, stopped by the burger stand. Hey, man, how you doing? He said, hey. He said, go ahead. You can paint my wall. He said, I'm going to tell you what day you could come and do it. So he told me I came back with my paint. Did it? He liked it. Gave me my hundred bucks. Mm, okay. 
14, 15 years old. I think I was 15 at the time. Okay. So mine okay. 15 years old, you know what I'm saying? Making that kind mm-hmm. of money with no responsibilities, living in parents' house. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And didn't have to sell no drugs back then like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Create went on to paint several murals for local businesses and continued to work on his art. At school, he developed a good reputation as an artist that spread to teachers and the school administration. Even though the school faculty didn't like or understand style writing, in high school, Create was given money to buy supplies to paint murals on the school walls. With each new opportunity, Create's confidence and skill level grew. As he approached high school graduation, he was more interested in making money than going to school to continue training as an artist. Um, our last, my last year in the 12th grade, uh, my teacher, she didn't like graffiti art, but she was trying to nurture us in doing other kind of art. She highly encouraged us to go to college and learn more about other fine arts. You know, so she loved to go to Art Center, go to Otis Parsons, go to uh, whatever community college and learn about art and be the best at it. But, you know, mind you, this ain't no excuse, but coming from the hood and, you know, coming from the inner city, a lot of people, they don't have that kind of money. So mm-hmm. the tuition at these big prestigious art schools was too much. I didn't have no scholarship or no, at that time, I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't have none of that. Now, I was in a special program called the Human Services for the Los Angeles Conservation Corps, where we did a lot of things for the community. Uh, there was an organization that was giving out scholarships for anybody who finished the program within a certain amount of months and do a lot in the community. I was one of those people who qualified for it, and they wanted to know, if we gave you this money, what did you want to do with it? You know me, I'm forcing about doing business. Mm-hmm. The people I looked up to kept saying, no, create, go to school, go to school. I'm like, man, I never loved school. I didn't like it. So all mm-hmm. I wanted to do was hustle and make money. Next thing you know, the guys I looked up to, uh, Mr. Cartoon, my buddy PJ, and a few other OG Able, uh, them the ones that told me, them dudes to this day, they very high up there in the, in the art world. Mm-hmm. You know, but this was back when they was young. They said, create, go to school, bro. You can learn much more, man, and you could be better. And I was like, ah, gritting my teeth about it. I said, I want to mm-hmm. make money. And I ended up taking their advice and going to school. Okay. Create attended Los Angeles Trade Technical College and studied commercial art for two and a half years. In the program, he continued to develop his illustration skills, learn how to design logos, and started to understand the business of being an artist. While in a new environment with other artists, with various backgrounds, like fine art and graphic design, he started to see the benefits of going to school. However, he did hit a few unexpected obstacles. First, his instructors looked down on graffiti art in favor of fine arts and commercial design. Second, he learned that his classmates would be his competition in the commercial art world, which he didn't have to worry about when working with local businesses and his school to paint murals. And lastly, he had to walk a careful line between the two worlds of style writing and commercial work.